So on this blessed appearance day of Niti Lila Pravishta, Om Vishnu Khan, Asro Tarasada, Shri Shila Bhakti, Rakshak Shri Hanga Swami Maharaj. We have been observing a very wonderful festival of Harikata in his glorification, beginning this morning and continuing in the late morning. We had a number of speakers giving their uh, Pushpanjali to the lotus feet of Srila Bhakti Raksak Sridhar Maharaj. Very wonderful uh, glorification of his divine qualities and his supremely wonderful contributions to our Rodiya Vaishnava Sampradaya. So this evening we're also continuing and we have a number of speakers who have developed their deep appreciation of Srila Sridhar Maharaj, especially through his Vani in the form of his transcendental books and his recorded lectures like this. So actually Srila Bhakti Rakshak Sridhar Maharaj has entered into the hearts of many devotees all throughout the world in so many different languages. Uh, his books have been translated. Um, and I experienced uh, many times over the years of traveling to different parts of the world, the devotees confide to me their deep appreciation and attachment to Srila Bhakti Rakshak Sridhar Maharaj, even though they never physically met him, but they feel in their heart of hearts that he is their Sikh Guru. So in actuality, this was one of the main teachings of Srila Bhakti Rakshak Sridhar Maharaj, is that he clarified Guru Tattva very, very specifically. He made everyone to understand what is the principle of Guru Tattva and how Sri Guru manifests as Diksha Guru, as Siksha Guru, Smartma Padarsha Guru, and so forth. But particularly, he explained our Guru Parampara line as being predominantly Siksha Parampara. This is more prominent. And we also experience this with our beloved Srila Gurudev, Srila Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj, because he also accepted from uh, many different Diksha Gurus, their, their disciples came and, and seeked out the shelter of his lotus feet. Many of us disciples of Srila Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada also came to the lotus feet of Srila Narayan Maharaj and fully embraced him as being uh, equal and not different uh, as our Gurudev, our Diksha Guru. So, actually the principle of Guru Tattva, the principle of Guru, is one. One principle, Sri Baladev Prabhu, the original Guru Tattva principle, Akanda Guru Tattva. And all Gurus are ultimately manifestations of that principle. So in this way, Srila Sridhar Maharaj, he uh, gave very many discourses on this subject matter. And there is one book in particular that has been compiled for many of those discourses. It is called Sri Guru and His Grace. And I can tell you that many devotees have told me that reading this book has changed their whole spiritual life and even saved their spiritual life. Uh, and this was actually one of the first books that I also read of Srila Bhakti Raksha Sridhar Maharaj. So if we were to have, you know, a uh, best-seller list of transcendental Vaishnava literatures, uh, definitely in the top five, this book would rate very highly, Sri Guru and His Grace. So I highly recommend that any devotee that has never read this book, particularly at this time period when our beloved Gurudev has gone to Nitya Lila, when we want to understand very clearly the subject matter of Guru Tattva, please acquire a copy of this. You can actually download it also for free on the internet. Uh, you just type in Sri Guru and His Grace, free download, and it will come to some sites. And then you can read them and see 
how very wonderfully Shibosh Universe presented this philosophy. There are many other books. One book is called Search for Sri Krishna, Reality the Beautiful. This was the very first book that came out from his recorded lectures in the early 1980s. And many wonderful clarifications of different subject matters in here, including Jiva Tattva, the origin of the soul. He discussed all the different six philosophies of India. Uh, he discussed Christianity in relationship to Vaishnavism in such a unique way that I'd never heard before. And he went very deeply into discussing uh, the transcendental Hare Krishna Mahamantra, how to serve the holy name, how to derive nectar from the holy name, so many different topics. So all of his books, they're so original. There's one book called The Lord's Loving Search for His Lost Servant. And this book is based upon Sri Vrita Bhagavatamrita of Srila Sanatana Goswami and various lectures that Srila Siddhar Maharaj gave on that topic. In such a beautiful way, he explained the whole science that was explained in Vrita Bhagavatamrita of all the different levels of existence and levels of Vaishnavas. And then, because Srila Siddhar had a very philosophical background, uh, he was actually a very great scholar in university prior to coming to the lotus feet of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, highly educated in the British universities of India at that time. And he had studied all Western philosophies and philosophers. So he had one disciple who was a, a doc PhD in science, and that disciple came and asked many questions from him. And there's a very unique conversation in which Srila Srinivas discussed what is reality uh, and how reality comes from consciousness. Uh, and the title of this book is called Subjective Evolution of Consciousness. Uh, the play of the sweet absolute. So every one of Sri Sridharaj's presentations is so original and actually very entertaining. If you read his books, you become quite astonished how wonderful his presentations. And as I told earlier today, there's one book called Sri Prabhupada Deva Stotra. And this is the book, this is the uh, great song that Srila Srinivas composed an incredible Sanskrit poetry, 72 verses, shlokas. Uh, he's discussing the life and teachings of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu from his childhood until his disappearance. And in 72 verses, he summarizes all those pastimes in a very sweet and wonderful way. So these are just a few. There are many other books that have also been uh, uh, produced from Srila Sridhar Maharaj's lectures. So tonight we'll also hear some little presentations from some of his Pani. Uh, so this evening I want to call on our first speaker, Shripad Bhakti Vinanda Siddha Dwayti Maharaj, who also has so much appreciation for the writings of Srila Sridhar Maharaj. I'm 
met, and I'm sure I should have marched through that book, the bestseller that I just spoke about, Shiguru and his grace. One Xerox copy came to France. And when I read that book, it completely blew my mind. I was thinking, this is the most complete presentation I've ever read on a Vaishnava philosophy, especially Guru Tata, which is the root of everything. Then uh, the same year, I met Shri Govinda Maharaj, and then I was so impressed by him that I thought, as long as we have one sadhu like that, I don't have to go outside of this country. Therefore, instead of going to Shri Shri Maharaj, I went to Shri Govinda Maharaj for the next 10 years. But I hold Shri Maharaj very dear to myself as a Siksha Guru. I have you know, devoured again and again his books. You know, and most of what I say when I travel is based on his books. So I'm sure that one of my fellow sannyasis when I travel again, he said, Maharaj, you never speak about you there. Only Shri Shri Maharaj, Shri Govinda Maharaj. But then I've you know, shared so much of my spiritual life. So Shri Shri Maharaj, he joined us already. Not young like us, he was already 32, because he took birth in West Bengal, Apania, in 1995, and he joined in 1927. Therefore, he was already 32 when he came up March, he was already a scholar, he had his BA in philosophy. So, we were used to, or Srila Prabhupada, I mentioned this in a Russian class this morning, not giving us like baby food, like mother bird eating and free. Chewing and giving to the baby uh, birth. But Shri Shri Maharaj was giving you know, the original stuff as it is. You have to digest this yourself. When you read these books, you're amazed because you are confronted with a huge companion of someone's lifetime realization. What Shri Prabhupada used to say, one of the uh, years that he came you know, to visit to observe the Vyasa Puja of Shri Shriya Maharaj. He said, I knew from the beginning he was a pure devotee. And Shri Prabhupada wanted me to put him out. Because he said, jokingly, and he turned you know, in a very funny way to Maharaj, oh, he called him the ease lover. And Shri Shriya Maharaj said, yes, it is my nature. I don't like big crowds. I like to take one verse and then study it and turn it in different ways and go deep into it and pull it know all the meaning from it. This is what I'd like to do. So when at the darkest hour of you know, this song, you know, in 1982 or even before that, you know, so many people came to Shri Shiva Maharaj. They didn't come to someone who was like a lion like Acharya preaching vision in the West. They came to someone who had been sitting there for about 40 years, but speaking. In Navadvitam, not deeply pondering and meditating on different you know, tattvas. And what came out from his mouth was that all his realizations, actually at the end of one of his you know, talks, he was saying, Oh, you are coming to me and you reminded me of my previous history, what I heard from my Guru Maharaj, and I spent my whole life digesting. You reminded me of this and you made me go and dive deep into those. That's what he spent his life doing. Taking one verse, what is the meaning, deep meaning, what the Acharya has spoken, what the verse, you know, and he brought that out. You know. In this way, just like he was glorifying you know, Shaitanya Mahaprabhu, he called him the golden volcano of divine love. I mean, every practically expression of Shri Shri Maharaj's you know, realization it's like a sutra. It's so pregnant with its meaning. So not just the words, you know. If you go deep into what it's saying, I mean, it's, it is endless, it is bottomless. Because he has spent, like I said, so much time meditating, praying, chanting on it. And then what comes out is like an amazing wealth of realization, but presented in a very philosophical language. So he was given the title Bhakti Lakshak, which means you know, protector of the current of Bhakti. When 
Saraswati Tagore solo, his composition, how he was glorifying God Shabbatino Tagore and his teaching, he remarked, oh, at least after me there will be one man who can present my conclusions, my participants. And in his time, in his prema, uh, his pranamanta, there is this one word, you know, Shri Siddhanta Nidhim. He's a deep reservoir of Bhakti Siddhanta. So when he glorified Mahaprabhu, he said, Mahaprabhu is absorbing the mood of Srimati Radhika. And just like a volcano, what's happening in the volcano? The magma, the lava is like churning whirlpools, is bubbling up and down. So in the heart of Srimati Radhika, all those bhavas towards Krishna that she is made of for the pleasure of Krishna, they're going up and down. And just like a volcano explodes and fills the lava, when Mahaprabhu is on his ecstasy, Shamaj not present in such a poetic way, then the verses of Shikshastaka would flow from his mouth like lava from a volcano. So he called him the golden volcano of divine love. Now who but the highest of philosopher and poet could coin such a phrase? And when we come to Sri Maharaj, we are very astonished as we see this is someone who is a very original writer, poet, acharya, no, guru. All the qualities we expect of a Vaishnava teacher, acharya, they are all presented. He has composed, not only has digested the previous acharya's you know, teachings, but he has composed his own particular no, Sanskrit works, original works in Sanskrit. Oh, an amazing writer. When you read this Premadama, Premadama Deva Stoka, <laughs> you have the whole Chaitanya Lila you know, passing through your eyes very quickly in an amazing way. The way it's a yeah, very uncanny way to present philosophy in a super form, very condensed form. And he's Prabhupada Jivanamrita. No. He was always preaching about surrender. On his original works. He collected from different acharyas and scriptures. And all the works of the acharyas. He was presenting you know, all the different steps of the path of surrender. His book is all about surrender and is presented step by step. Just like Tato Bhaktivino, he has written about surrender, Shalamagati. Because for every name of Shalamagati, so many songs are there. So Shri Shri Maharaj, in the same way, for every name of Shalamagati, so many verses he has taken, plus some he has composed himself. Because although Acharya means all accommodating, was one of the main qualities of Shri Ashrita He could reconcile, he could accommodate everyone. This is a unique quality of Akshaya. In Bhubaneshwar 1977, Shri Prabhupada said, the first duty of Akshaya is Sampradaya Rakshan, to serve the Sampradaya. And Shri Ashrita definitely did this. He served the Sampradaya. When there were two parties fighting, who would be the Akshaya, the next Akshaya? Everyone naturally backed up Ananta Vasudev because Kunjati had the problem. He was manager and he claimed, I should be the Acharya. But the other party said, hey, wait a minute, he's managing all the properties, the money, everything, he's collecting. But no, he shouldn't be Acharya. No, if Acharya must be, it should be the, the much more scholarly Ananta Vasudev. And everyone backed him up. All Prabhupada, Shri Ashura Maharaj, Bhakti Pranayam, Vishal Maharaj, everyone backed Ananta Vasudev. Against the other one, was not obviously you know, uh, another caliber of the devotee. No, everyone knew at that time, if you want to know philosophy, you go to Ananda Vasudev. If you want to know about management and business, you go to Punjabi Hadith. So when there was a choice, naturally everyone voted for him. Not considering that, you know, Shira Bhakisan, that's a black horse, make a GPC work together conjointly, and whoever is at Sharia, it will come out naturally. But they want, when this Acharya Acharya business started you know, to manifest and they forgot the instruction and put it all issue. Like, everyone followed suit, all over there, Param everyone followed. Later on they, they lamented about it. Shri Shri Maharaj, because of his you know, reserved nature, he 
the Lord reveals his, his known only by he to whom he chooses to reveal himself. He said, what can we do? And another original presentation of his was, you can only increase your negative potency, negative sign. You are, he is only positive, and you are negative, feminine, shakti, and you have to only open yourself to the grace. Should I go on just to say like that? That is a very feminine attitude. Not that we will storm the gates of Vrindavan or Vaikuntha, but we will open ourselves to receive the grace. So should I want just to say that you have to increase your negative side, this in the sense of electricity, positive, negative. You have to you know, open yourself to receive the grace, never thinking that, oh, by Gyan, you can catch that sort of truth by your intellect. He was regularly speaking, Jnana Prayas, you have to give up this, Jnana Shunya Bhakti, you have to give it up. That no morbid tendency that with my intellect I will be able to catch that sort of truth. No, he is revealed. He would say it's not a question of self realization, it's a question of self revelation. No, the absolute reveals himself to one who is pleased with by his negative attitude, means he's opening himself, making himself completely free from any desire, even a desire to enjoy his spiritual. He said the highest devotee is not concerned with it. Oh, oh, I should see God, I should have some uh, closeness to God. No, no. In his presentation, he was you know, very chaste, you know, very reserved. Some of our God brothers, they even use you know, these words in a distorted way to blame our Gurudev because Gurudev was presenting this in such an open way. You know, Gurudev was particularly you know, empowered to present you know, the highest Siddhanta in a very free way. If you go to in other Gautamas even, they will never speak this kind of topic. They will even become angry if you speak like that. Hey, why do you speak such hard topic? They discuss it and close the order with some old sannyasis, discussions and discussing the realizations, but never in public what to speak to Westerners, forget. But all she had it, oh, he was inspired to keep this, the highest presentation of bhakti, the highest topics, to the entire world through his writing and through his preachers. So Shiva Maharaj was always remaining very discreet about it. But at the same time, if you read, you know, especially towards the end of his books, he was very rasic. So, before Shashira Maharaj, who knew the meaning of Gayatri Mantra? Who knew the proper meditation of Gayatri Mantra? Especially Brahma Gayatri. He revealed, oh, it is not the sun, it is not Paramatma, it is not Vishnu, it is not even Krishna itself. Who is the uh, object of meditation? It is no one else but Shimatila Dikara And he presented the verse, you know, dissecting the verse, the Gayatri verse, in such a way that it was presenting all this Bhagavad that you are speaking in that verse. This is the divine energy of the Lord. And then he reads the Lord himself. So his presentation of the philosophy is very, very amazing. He has the you know, protector of Sampradaya and he's a source of inspiration for countless devotees. I present my Shalakun Manjali at the Zodhisattva today, praying that he will always keep us you know, enlightened. He was like a beacon of light, not only for his time, but for generations to come. Now, the books of Shila Shila Maharaj will be held you know, very highly in the future because he has presented our philosophy in such a wonderful way. No, not only simple way, but also very philosophical. Anyone can come to the path of Vaishnavism or study Vaishnavism and not say, oh, this is just sentimentalist people. When you come to Shri Ashrama, you cannot say like this. Because you have to really you know, tax the brain sometimes to go deep into what he is speaking. <laughs> So now uh, we're requesting Pujapad Bhaktivedanta Maharaj to glorify Shiva Sridhar Maharaj, the 
has a very wonderful mood of uh, attachment to the body of Srila Sridhar Maharaj. So we will be very benefited. In Navadvi, when he used to stay at Devananda Gauri Mat, so, you know, the Sri Chaitanya Saraswat Mat is just up the road, 10 minute walk. <laughs> So he used to go over there and hear directly from Shiva Shiva Maharaj. So now we'll hear about his experience and his association with him.
राजा गरिष्ठ के अपराध को लीला जी कथा को जगत में प्रचार करके अंग्रेजी लोगों की कल्याण मान की इसलिए बार बार माई उनके चरण कौल में प्रणाम करता मेरा भी सौभाग्य भी प्राप्त हुई उनके दर्शन और उनके सक्षात मुखारविंद से कुछ खड़ी कथा श्रवण कर दी दारी सोचे उनके लिए कुछ के पास पास भी प्रैक्टिकल की मुद्दे की सोच याद है जब मैं पहली बार दिवानंद गौरव मठ में आया तो उस समय मठ में विशेष कोई पाठक नहीं था क्योंकि उस समय सभी लोग प्रचार में चले गए और केवल ब्रह्मचारी लोग कुछ पाठ करते थे चेतन भागवत और चेतन चेता उन द्वारा साधु रूप में पाठ करते थे जिससे मेरा मन नहीं लगता था तो एक ब्रह्मचारी बोले देखो चलो निकट में ही प्रभुपात की जगह उनके मुख्य से कुछ हरी कर सकते इससे मैं अपने चादर जी के आदेश लेकर के ही अर्थात मधुसूर महाराज से मधुसूर महाराज जी से मैं आदेश लेकर के दोपहर के समय मैं जाता था तीन चार तीन बजे चार बजे के मैं जाता था और उस समय मैंने देखा कि सक्षात में दर्शन किया श्री महाराज जी अशुभ तो लीला कर रहे थे और इजी चेयर में थोड़ा बहुत बैठे थे और उनके सामने जगह पर माइक्रोफोन रखा था और कुछ विदेशी लोग चारी तरफ मधुमक्षी के भांति घेरे हुए थे जैसे एक कमल प्रस्फुटित होता है और जिस वह चारी तरफ कमल जैसे थे मधु मधुमक्षी जैसे मरमराते हैं उसी प्रकार वो समस्त विदेशी भक्त लोग विराजमान और मैंने कई बार उनके जब दर्शन किया वही कथा मैंने मुझे सुनने के लिए मिला था भक्ति रसाम सिंह मेरा याद है अच्छी तरह से भक्ति रसाम सिंह और उसी समय में भक्ति रसा सिंधु में ही अन्ना अभिलाष का सुन इस श्लोक के उन्होंने व्याख्या कर रहे थे इंग्लिश में जीवन में कवि भक्ति के परिभाषा जो ऐसे हो सकता है अन्ना अभिलास का सुन उस समय भी मैं तो श्लोक याद ही श्लोक में जमता नहीं था ये क्या श्लोक बोल रहे कान में कुछ पड़ा याद कर थोड़ा बहुत याद आ गया आकर के मैंने फिर आकर के प्रभु के बोले उस समय कृष्ण प्रभु चाचा जी को बोला ये श्लोक कहाँ की है बोले भक्ति का समझ सिंधु के श्लोक है तब उन्होंने दिखाया मेरे याद है तब उसी दिन पहले दिन ही आने के बाद ही उनकी कथा श्रवण करके मैंने उसी दिन ही अन्ना सुन्नम इस श्लोक को जो मैंने याद किया बहुत आनंद आनंद आ गया था ये भक्ति के ऐसे परिहार का हो सकता है नवन उक्त हुई श्रोति और एक श्रवण हरिकला उनके भी संग भी प्राप्त हुआ था हमारे गांव में जाते थे तो उनके किंतु कभी ऐसे भी भक्ति के परिभाषा मैंने कभी नहीं सुना और श्री महाराज श्री महाराज जी कितने सुंदर रूप में बोल रहे थे और भक्त लोग आनंद भी दे रहे थे मेरे बात इसलिए मैं क्या करता था लोग से हरी कथा इतने लोग हो गए उस कथा को बढ़ते जा रहे और उस कथा को सुनने के लिए मैं नित्य तत्व ही जाता था मैंने कहा मैं मूर्ख था मैंने कहा नहीं मेरे दादाजी है 
और मेरे सारे जो परिवार के लोग सुधारी है जैसे एक्सरसाइज हो गए सब अपने आस पास के गाँव के लोग सभी पर हमारे दोस्त हो मैंने इधर देखा इस सरसपुर में तो हमारी कोई नहीं है मुफ्त में मैं था इसलिए मैंने कहा दिया नहीं मैं घर फिर उस एक महीने के बाद सिर्फ महाराज जी पधारे तो महाराज जी के मुखार में जब हरी कथा सुन लिया अगर तो याद है इसी कथा को जब महाराज पहले दिन हरी कथा बोला उस समय चंद्र ग्रहण था और गोपियों की मिलन चंद्र ग्रहण की कथा जो है कुरुक्षेत्र की कथा उससे चंद्र ग्रहण था गुरुदेव ने हरी कथा बोली और चंद्र ग्रहण के समय गुरुदेव ने गोपियों के साथ मिलन में सूर्य ग्रहण की कथा सब करा दे मैंने महाराज के मुखार में से मेरे याद है वो गोपियों की जो मान करके हुए थे क्या हो गया
उनकी कथा अमृत कथा श्रवण करके आज लोग जी बहुत से बाल के जा रहे जिस वजह से दृष्टि है वो उसी प्रकार दृष्टिकोण से देखते हैं उसी प्रकार प्रभुपात के निमित्त का जन्म ईश्वर श्री कृष्ण महाराज श्री रमुक्ति जिस प्रकार चैतन्य महाप्रभु दक्षिण देश में जो गए नाम प्रेम धर्म आदि प्रचार करने लगे महाप्रभु के दर्शन करके सब महाभागवत को गए और उसी महाभागवत को और कुबेर भी उसी प्रकार गुरु में ही वह भाव 